Hi, I'm Shara Kaufman. I'm international artist and author of the Artful Mandala Coloring Book and the Ancient Alchemy Coloring Book. And today I'm going to give you some tips on blending basics for colored pencils. All right, everyone, today we have a lot to cover. And so I'm going to go through about 12 different ways to do blending in a pretty short period of time. So if you need to watch this video over again, uh, feel free to uh, revisit any of these because I'm going to go through them pretty quickly so that you can get an overview of a lot of different ways that artists do blending with pencils. But do know that there are even more ways than what I'm about to show you. So keep exploring, keep uh, expanding your knowledge base. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is by using a single color. And when I say a single color, it means that we're just going to use just the single pencil. And I've done a base layer for all of my examples here so that we can have something to get started with. By blending with a single color, you're going to do small circles. It works best if you have a sharp pencil because the sharper the point, the more that the pigment can go into the tooth of the paper, meaning the surface texture of the paper. And the fastest way to create a blending technique is really to create a darker and a lighter area of your color. And if you do small circles, you're more apt to keep the point pointed longer than if you were to go in and just go straight down onto the tip. If you rotate your pencil, it'll keep the tip sharper longer. And then as you move out, you just lighten your touch and let it just gently fade into the lighter areas. And that is the easiest way to create a blending technique by simply layering a single color. Okay? So the second way is to start with a base color, which is the one that we've started out with here, and you move to one that's a little bit darker. You do the same technique where you do small circles, move in gentle fashion around the area that you want to create a shaded or blended effect, and you really want to take your time. If you go too quickly, what happens is that people will have a tendency to press hard and then they will press down and create some damage to the tooth of the paper. And if the tooth of the paper is intact, you'll be able to create more layers longer, meaning that, say for instance right now, I wanted to go back and add another layer of my lighter color. I can create a very different effect as long as the tooth is intact on the paper I can continue to add more layers between these two colors. Rotating my pencil keeping the tip of the pencil point by rotating it, rotating it will keep it pointed longer and I can use the pencil getting into the tooth of the paper. So there's an example of just using two colors. So what happens if I want to use more than two colors? Well I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a very light layer rotating my pencil And I'm going to show you this in real time. And really, I'm working a little faster than I might do for my own work, just because I want to be able to show you in kind of a, a quick fashion. But really, when you are connected to your tools, which your pencils are, you really want to spend some time in allowing them to lay the pigment down in, um, in a non-rushed way. I'm going to use the second color back again. I just want to create sort of a softening between these two layers by just adding that base color back again. Small little circles, rotating my pencil, keeping the tip of it pointed by rotating it. 
Now I'm going to add a third color. So this third color is actually quite different. It's a, it's kind of a um, violet blue is what it is in, in the Prismacolor pencils. And I'm going to do a very light layer. Small circles rotating my pencil. And it's going to create a different kind of shadow effect. I'm going to go back with my lighter pencil and I'm just going to be building layers just gently over time and as long as I do lighter layers and allow the pencils to build on one another it will gently fill in the tooth of the paper as long as my pencil is sharp if my pencil is dull it's going to just be on the surface and it really won't go into the layers of uh, the tooth of the paper so I'm going to keep rotating my pencil and just rotate which pencil I'm using and that can create shaded areas, blended areas, shadowed areas. Just be patient. Don't add them too quickly. And you can see a big difference between the three. So now there is a way moving to a white pencil now a white pencil can actually help to fill in some of the areas uh, of the tooth of the paper by just moving the pigment around. In other words, the white pencil is made with the same binding agents as, as your pigmented pencil, but I'm not adding really any additional colors in this. I'm simply kind of smoothing it out. Now you might be able to notice that this is a, it's going to lighten it just a little bit, but you'll notice that this is a little different than this area here, which was the single color. This is showing the tooth of the paper is still in there, that white of the paper is here. The white of the paper is here as well, but there's something of a muted effect that's taking place. Now out of curiosity, I'm just going to see about adding a little bit more of my green. Now that my white is on there, it smoothed it out just a little bit. So when I go back, it's going to cover on the surface a little bit differently. White can also be used to what they call burnish. Burnish is when you're using a lot more pressure and you're pushing the pigment down into the tooth of the paper and it it's going to create a shine. That's going to be your last thing that you do. You will not be able to build on your tooth of your paper once you have done burnishing. So be very mindful of the pressure that you're using if you decide to use a light color, like white, to just soften and smooth out areas. Now over here, another option is that you can use any light colored pencil that you have if you don't have a white or if you want to add something a little bit different. So here I'm going to use a pale sage color. And you'll notice it begins to fill in the tooth of the paper because it's moving the pigment of that original base color as well as coloring it in just slightly. And it's going to create a smoothed out effect. And we're using this just to blend the areas without creating a dramatic color change like these two did. Now just to show you, I'm going to come over here and use this light one on one side here just to show you how it can smooth and soften an area. And I'm only going to do one side of this leaf here. And I'm doing small circles. And you may be able to notice that this is showing the white of the paper just a little bit more. It's a little rougher looking. This is beginning to smooth out. Moving on, using a blender pencil. Using a blender pencil is going to look very similar to the pencil that we have used that has pigment. The difference between a blender pencil and a regular pencil is that this has the binding agents that my pencil does but lacks the pigment. So a blender pencil can help to move 
the pigment around without adding any color whatsoever. This can be very helpful if you do not plan on adding any additional colors. It does the same effect as the white pencil and a light colored pencil without adding any color. It just sort of softens and smooths out. Now this blender pencil, I'm going to move to this one here so that you can see what it looks like on half of the leaf. I do the same thing as I do with my pencils where I do small circles because this is in effect a pencil and I, wouldn't, I want the point to remain sharp enough to move the pigment into the tooth of the paper. And I rotate my pencil, move in small areas, little circles. Okay, the next technique we're going to show you is using a blending stump. Now, blending stumps and tortillons are often found in a package that looks like this. Blending stumps are compressed paper, and tortillons are the rolled paper. Now, the blending stumps can be used by themselves where they push, push the wax around because it's just a paper product and it's just moving the wax around and it can work very similarly to a blending pencil. This is the one caution I have with the blending stumps is that with the blending stumps, you might find that you are pressing hard enough to go into a burnishing effect and damaging the tooth of the paper and not being able to add more layers um, because force or pressure might be something that you are unconsciously using to move to move the pigment around. So just keep that in mind that blending stumps are absolutely a they're an option. I mean they create a softened effect. Um, just just be aware of the amount of pressure that you're using when you use a blending stump. And you can go back over if the if the tooth is intact, you can continue to use you know more layers you can go back in use a blending stump to soften I mean it's certainly an option let's just show you with a different layer here of a different color what that looks like when it moves in and you can use it to soften the edges now one thing with a blending stump is that you'll notice that it picked up the pigment here so one of the things you'll need to consider is a piece of sandpaper and this is just a paper product and so you're just going to sharpen basically the blending step into a point once again but it's the way of erasing the pigment on the blending stump so that you can use it for any other color because you don't want to add green to say a yellow and it will sharpen it to another point again Okay, blending markers. I'm going to show you two different kinds of blending markers. Both of these have two different kinds of points. This one here has a uh, point that is more of a nib and this one is more of a brush tip end. This one has a small, it looks like this, these are very similar, a small tip. And then this one here, this one actually has a chisel tip this way. And this is great for large areas. So this one is, is a finesse, and I'm going to use it on the side here. What it does is it melts the wax and allows things to be moved around and softens and fills in the white spaces. So this side here, we'll use the finesse. Now here's the thing with this, is that you're going to want to get a, another piece of paper and just kind of rub and make sure that any pigment that you picked up on the end of your um, blending marker is off of it. And it'll just run clear and then you know it's cleaned out. Now, it may get stained, but don't worry about that. If it's running clear on another piece of paper, then it's good to go for the next blending. This one here is a Prismacolor, and I'll just show you. You can see it's stained on the edge a little bit, but it's clear. It's clean. So this is what it looks like on this side. And you'll notice the effect is the same. Just kind of melts the wax a little bit. 
and blends it together. And then I'll just come over here and make sure that I don't have any pigment left on my on my pen. There you go. See, all clear, and it blends. Okay, now the next two is when we start to move into a, something a little bit different that people can get a little intimidated by, but it's it's something that you can certainly play with. I'm going to show you a technique using Vaseline. Now Vaseline, if you use Vaseline, you can use it with any pencil. It does not have to be a fancy pencil. It can be an inexpensive pencil. But this is how, this is how you use with Vaseline. Is You'll just take your pencil and you're going to dip in just a tiny little bit on the edge. And I've put a base coat here on one side just so that you can see the difference of what happens when I use Vaseline. And this is the exact same pencil that I used on that base side is you'll notice that it, it's immediately darker. And what I have found is that the Vaseline goes up higher on to the pigmented part of the pencil. And so what I have found is that if I really want to use more of that, I'll lay my pencil a little bit flatter and I'll use that whole area. It's real important that you continue to turn your pencil because what happens is that it is softening the wax of your pencil and you want it to maintain sharpness so you want to rotate it. So you definitely can see a big difference here. Now when I'm done with this I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to get off all of the extra Vaseline otherwise it's going to continue to soften the wax on my pencil. So now just to show you a secondary color. I'll dip a little bit in. I got a little bit of, of Vaseline here and I'm going to put it in just right here on the edge and you can see how it begins to blend and move together. I'm going to move my pencil around because it's already starting to create a divot just in that little tiny bit. I'm going to take off the extra on my paper towel. I'm just going to take off, clean off the pencil. Now I'm going to go back in with this first layer, but I'm not going to add any Vaseline because really there is a little bit left on the paper right there, and I just want to kind of fill in and smooth out and move any of that pigment around. So you can see a big difference from that base color and I can see already that just that little bit that was left on my paper has already started to soften this, this pencil up a little bit here. Now, if you have concerns, if you're coloring in a coloring book, if you have any concerns about the, the Vaseline being left on there, you can always take, I'll show you here, I'm going to use a clean edge. You can dab it, and I'll show you barely any came off. But if you have concerns, you can take a little bit of a paper towel and see if there's any that, that lifts up off of that. There you go. And then what really what you're left with is really quite dry. I mean there's nothing that comes off here on my fingers anyway. So that's Vaseline. And the next one is using a solvent that I do not recommend if you're pregnant or nursing because it is a solvent. And this is Gamsol. And Gamsol is a odorless mineral spirits and it's designed to clean brushes. It's designed to break things down um, in, uh, with the wax and the pigments. What's nice is that you can use it to your advantage to move pigments around. So I'm going to use a blending stump just like we did earlier. And I have taken a little bit of Gamsol and I've put it in a glass jar. And this is just some cotton balls just so that I have a little bit of something in there that if it's spilled, it's not going to be spilling out all over the place. And I can just take take the, um, the blending stump and you'll notice that it absorbed the Gamsol right into it. And I'm just going to cover that. And with the blending stump, I'm just going to do small circles. I'm helping to break down the pigment by doing small circles. 
and then I gently move it out towards the center. Every time I do a circle back into my pigment, I'm bringing a little bit more of that pigment out towards the center, and it's going to create a, a real soft vignette. In other words, it's going to go from darker to lighter, and it's a wonderful way to create a very soft effect using only a little bit of your pigment and have a highlight naturally show up. Now I can go back over if I wanted to with another color. It's helpful if you wait until the Gamsol dries or else it's going to begin to break it down a little bit. It dries very very quickly. Again I'm just using small little circles beginning to pull this out if you're using different colors, now this is all in the green family, so I'm using the same blending stump, but say I were to change to pink or something in the reds, I would use the other end of the blending stump or get a different blending stump. And then if I needed to use this blending stump, I would go to the sandpaper and I would remove the green and then be able to have a clean edge, a clean sharp point, and be able to use it that way. So there's a way to use Gamsol. All right, moving on to our next technique is by using a gel pen. Now, I do have an entire video that does talk about and shows more in depth examples of using gel pen with pencil, and you're more than welcome to visit that, and I'll, I'll include a link so that you can access that very quickly. But I do want to show there's a lot of interest in gel pens. What I have found in my experience is that gel pens work best if there's a little bit of pencil already on the paper. The reason is that the pencil that's on the paper creates a wax base and allows the gel pen to move. So there is a way to create a blending effect and I'll just put a little bit of gel pen here and this is what I call a dry brush method where I just take a dry brush and I just begin to move those colors by pushing, pushing the gel pen into the tooth of the paper and it begins to fill in all the white spaces. Now what's really cool about this is that this particular pen happens to be a glitter gel pen which means that I am also taking the glitter sparkle of the gel pen and moving it around without having to fill the whole thing in. So if I were to take this page and I were to tilt it a little bit into the light you'd be able to see more sparkles in the entire leaf. Now for a wet gel pen technique, I'm going to clean my brush here just to show you. I have a very thin, uh, shallow container of water here, and I'm just making sure that I have a very clean brush for you. Now this is the way that I apply for a wet technique. I'm going to do the same thing with the gel pen and just apply just a little bit. I'm going to take this brush, dip it barely into the water, and it's really just the tip of the brush into the water. I'm not having it go swim, it's just really on the very tip of it. And I'm going to blot out both sides of my brush. I want a damp brush, not a wet brush, and that is the key. If you have a wet brush, you're going to saturate your paper way too quickly, it's going to create a mess. So the idea is that it's just barely damp, you just want to be able to move the gel pen. Now this is going to create a little bit of a wetness. Once it dries you can go back over and add more layers but if you are using something that has a sparkle or gel or metallic type look you want this to be one of your last layers because if you are desiring that glitter effect you want that to be the last layer that you have on there. If you decide to go back over, it's going to begin to um, you know, cover that up a little bit. So you want to just be mindful of how you're using that. Okay, I'm going to show a couple of real quick examples of how to use this in actual application when using a coloring page. So the first is Gamsol. And I've already dipped the blending stump into the solution. 
and you can see that it is absorbed in. Move this to cover that. And here I'm just going to do small circles, bring it towards the center. And I'm going to do all of my oranges first because the pigment of the colored pencil is going to absorb into my blending stump. And since I have the pencil already down, I'm just going to go quickly using the gamsol with the orange. Small circles, moving it towards the center and light strokes. And since I'm going to do an application where these are going to blend a little bit closer together, I'm just going to go straight into using my red. And when I move towards the center, I'm just going to lighten my pressure just a little bit. Okay, so there's an application of the Gamsol. Now remember, if you want to use this over again, you can go to the sandpaper and scrub that off and you can have a brand new stump ready to use. Okay, the next is we're going to use a colorless blender pen. And I'm going to use the small end since this is a fairly small area. I'm going to leave this one as just pencil and I'm going to use the pen here on the petal next to it so that you can see how this softens and smooths out color with the pen. And remember that when you have the blender pen you want to go to a scratch piece of paper and just run it through until it's clear and it may be stained but don't worry about that. If it runs clear it's good to go for the next time around. Next we're going to use a blending pencil. So this was the pen and now we're going to use a blending pencil here. I'm going to use small little circles, small little circles all the way around pushing the pigment into the tooth of the paper just to soften and smooth out those color variations from orange into yellow. And the next one we're going to do a dry application of the gel pen. So I'm going to put a little bit of gel pen right here and I'm going to take a brush and immediately begin to move the gel. And I actually I think I'm going to do a little bit of wet application here. So I've just dipped my brush tip into some water. I'm going to dab out both sides and I'm going to begin to pull a little bit of that gel pen. And the last we're going to do Vaseline. Now you'll notice I don't have a space with the pencil already down because the Vaseline works really well with the pencil itself. So we're going to do just a quick application of Vaseline on the pencil itself. It's actually got quite a bit of Vaseline on, more than I would normally apply. And I think we're going to use that to our advantage. I'm going to put some of that extra Vaseline right on the paper, I think. And then I'm going to use my yellow straight into that Vaseline. I'm going to wipe off the Vaseline from the yellow and the orange so that they are clean again. And I'm going to add a little bit of red down here. I'm using the Vaseline that's already existing on the paper and not dipping back in because I actually grabbed quite a bit when I dipped my first orange pencil in.
Examples from today were from the Ancient Alchemy Coloring Book, Celtic Knots, Mandalas, and Sacred Symbols. And if you enjoy looking at different kinds of symbols and coloring books, I invite you to check out my first book, The Artful Mandala Coloring Book, Creative Designs for Fun and Meditation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Cher Kaufman. Until next time from the drawing desk, may you find more color in your day.